That's the foremost. That's very, very important. Among, you know, you may have the best technology in, the, the, in developing the foot, the uh, knee joint, but the patient, if it doesn't, if it doesn't fit the patient, the patient just will not use the limb. So this is what we were, we were concerned with, uh, how we can improve giving the patient a good limb uh, that will fit him very well. This is how it's done traditionally. Okay? A very skilled, uh, trained uh, uh, limb maker, we call him a prosthetist. A prosthetist would, first of all, make an assessment of the rescue limb to find out which part of the limb is painful when pressure is applied. So a certain part of the, the, the limb uh, will be able to uh, uh, tolerate a lot of pressure. So those parts, he, we want to know, and those parts that are sensitive to pressure, we would also like to know so that those parts, those those parts of the limb, we can actually provide some relief huh, of pressure. So the process goes about first of all in assessing the uh, patient's uh, uh, residue limb to find out where these uh, pain sensitive areas are and pain tolerant areas are, and then he will mark them out. He will then make a cast. As you can see, the cast is produced, and then uh, uh, a positive mold is then made out of plaster of Paris. Now, once this mold is made, the, the prosthetist will then shake the mold. Based on his knowledge, when he was assessing the patient, he knows which part is painful. So he will shape it such that those parts that were painful will not have high load when the patient walks on it. And those parts that are tolerant to pain, he would then shape it such that more load will go through this, and that the patient can sustain those loads. So this is how it's been done. Uh, uh, and then uh, the socket is then made over this positive mode. And this is a, a pretty long process. Huh? Uh, so, like I mentioned before, it is important that the, the, the interface is right huh, between the residual limb and the uh, and the socket. Now the poor fitting can lead to pressure sores, gait deviation, reduced mobility, and uh, postural problem, and increase the cost of rehabilitation. Patient will go back into the hospital in and out, huh? and that's not very good. So this is how it's done. Huh? Just basically running through uh, the kind of design that we have in terms of uh, this socket. First of all, this is a below knee socket. That means the amputation is below the knee. This is the knee. So it's below the knee. One of the places that we know that the patient can tolerate a lot of load is this region here, just below the kneecap. Just below the kneecap. And this is what we call the patellar tendon. The patellar tendon runs down here. And just below the kneecap or the patellar, is a place where you can place very high load. How do we know? Well, those of you who are very fervent, you know, you praise a lot and kneel, you realize that when you kneel, you can kneel quite long. Huh? Uh, that portion when you kneel uh, is where you can actually have quite a high load. So this is where we want to support the whole artificial leg on. Huh? So this is where, so the patient, sometimes we ask the patient, do you have any friends who are in this situation, and when he wears a, a below below knee uh, prosthesis, you ask him how does he? He will say, "Oh, it feels like kneeling." Really, I'm not joking. He say, "Oh, when I use artificial, it, it feels like I'm kneeling." So, so that is important to to re recognize that this is an area which can take a lot of load. So that's why we call this kind of design the patellar tendon bearing. Uh, socket design. That's how the name that's how the name comes about. So these are areas and this is some mechanics uh, that people can achieve and I'm just trying to impress you that I know something uh, about this. And that's because the load goes quite a lot here and that's why the patient feels that he is like kneeling down and uh, it's like this force here S uh, is like he's kneeling and this is where all the loads are going through. 
uh, okay, these are just some pressure. Now, the problem faced with this kind of uh, 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 design is that you need a very tight uh, fit around the proximal or this part of the uh, of the of the of the residual limb. It's sometimes too tight, and too congested, and you may press against the the nerve that is behind the knee, and it can be quite painful. Uh, so, uh, so this kind of prosthesis uh, design uh, does face a few problems, and one of the things that we try and do is to to see whether we can resolve this problem by introducing a different technique of uh, taking the cast and also providing a design. So we come up with what we call a, a hydrostatic or pressure cast system. And it's very simple. What we do here is that instead of the prosthetist having to, to find out on the, on the residue limb where the, where the sensitive painful areas are, we just ignore all those. We just ignore all those. Huh? Ignore all those. We just basically wrap a material which will harden after a while. Huh? So this material, uh, at this point in time, we were using plaster of Paris. So we will just wrap the patient's residue with plaster of Paris. Uh, we can mold it for a short while. After a while, it will be hardened. Before it hardens, uh, this is where we, before it hardens, we, we ask the amputee to insert his, uh, his uh, rescue limb into this tank, into this tank here. This is a water tank. Uh, a water tank that has a diaphragm inside the tank, so you can imagine. There's a diaphragm in the, in the tank. So it separates the stump or the rescue limb from the water, creates a separation. So he, the, the subject insert his uh, residue lip into the tank and then we apply pressure, water pressure. The water pressure will then pressurize the, the material, the socket, the cast as it hardens. And then we allow the, the subject to stand on and he could stand. There's no problem. The water pressure is allowed, is able to hold up his weight. And uh, so once it's done, uh, we will have a, a mold. Huh? We'll have a mold and we can actually make the artificial from that. 